Hi friends, thanks for uh, connecting with me today. I hope that you've had a good week. And uh, I also hope that these daily devotionals that we've been reading together in this little book, 40 Days with Jesus, I, I really hope that they've made a difference for you and been helpful for you in your walk with the Lord. Um, I got to tell you that I have really enjoyed reading these little devotionals every day. In fact, uh, this past week, so on Monday when I started preparing for this talk today in our discussion on Sunday, uh, that is based on next week's readings, right? So next week's readings, you know, will be uh, day 19 to 20, um, whatever six days are. Um, as I was doing on Monday, a quick overview of our readings in these next few days, uh, I was noticing, you know, the themes on day 19, is about intimacy with Jesus, just that loving connection that we have with him. Day 20 is about trusting in Jesus. Day 21 is about putting our hope in Jesus. And then day 22 is the security that we have in Jesus. And this past Monday, when I was preparing for this coming week, these themes, as I was overviewing, getting an overview of them, they really resonated with me. And I think it's probably because at the moment, you know, kind of earlier in the week, Monday, Tuesday, whatever, I was kind of feeling the weight of life. I was, there, there was just, just different stuff going on. Uh, my task list was longer than what I was able to you know, accomplish. And I was feeling, feeling like I was falling behind in stuff that needed to be done. Just feeling a bit of worry, feeling a bit of anxiety, and really was lacking in peace. And these themes really resonated with me. And then last Monday, uh, as I was preparing this, then I read uh, our daily devotional as we're reading along together in day 14. And day 14 really resonated with me. And I'd actually like to break our protocol a little bit today. And uh, I want to go back to talk about, usually I'll, I'll choose a topic for the days that are lying ahead that we'll read together. But I want to break protocol and go back to day 14, something that we read this past week. At the beginning, uh, Sarah Young, the author, uh, says this, and again, she's writing in the first person as if God is talking directly to us. So you'll hear that in the language. Uh, Sarah Young said, kind of like as if God was talking to us, peace is my continual gift to you. Did you catch that? Peace is my continual gift to you. It flows abundantly from my throne of grace. Just as the Israelites could not store up manna for the future, but had to gather it daily, so it is with my peace. I have designed you to need me moment by moment. As your awareness of your neediness increases, so does your realization of my abundant sufficiency. There's so much there, but this idea of just like the Israelites had to every day collect manna, except of course on the Sabbath, uh, but every day they had to collect because the, the provision was for that day. And as Sarah is saying here that, you know, every day we need to collect or we need to reinforce the peace that Jesus gives to us. And this really resonated with me, especially because of how I was feeling that day, just a lack of peace, bit of worry, um, and just, you know, task lists and just stuff and just kind of the weight of life, really. Nothing, nothing really significant, but just I was feeling the weight of life on that day. And then uh, Sarah went on to quote, uh, of course, the, the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4. And I'd like to unpack this a little bit today and have a conversation about what Paul said to, had to say. So uh, he says in verse 6, don't worry, or in the NIV, he sa it says, don't be anxious. And we'll come back and talk about that in just a moment. Don't worry or don't be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, Paul says, 
Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, and then listen to this, then the God of peace, the God of peace will be with you. I, I, we're going to come back and talk about that and break it down a little bit, but I, I want to begin by just commenting on something that Paul says at the very beginning. You know, he says, don't be, don't worry or don't be anxious about anything. And you know, friends, um, you know, it's almost like uh, when, when we're in the middle, sometimes anxiety is caused by circumstances that are put on us kind of thing, or sometimes circumstances that we put on ourselves. But sometimes anxiety uh, or, you know, worry, but anxiety is, it's just, it's a chemical thing that is happening in our brain, right? And so when Paul says, don't worry or don't be anxious, you know, if we read this on the surface, we might think, like Paul is just saying to stop it. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen, I think it's so funny, but there's an old um, uh, 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 Bob Newhart, I, I'll get there eventually. There's an old Bob Newhart sketch, skit where uh, Bob plays the part of a counselor or a psychotherapist, and this woman comes in with this, this phobia that she has, claustrophobic, about being buried alive in a box, and she explains to her counselor, and Bob Newhart says, okay, I have two words for you, and, you know, and he says, stop it, just stop feeling that way, S-T-O-P, new word, I-T, stop it, you know, and the joke is that that's just a ridiculous thing to, for a counselor to say, just stop feeling the way you're feeling, right, and, um, if you have, if you wanted to look it up, you could just Google Bob Newhart stop it. That's how I found it again, and um, and it'll come up pretty quickly on YouTube. But um, but it almost seems on the surface, it seems like Paul is saying here, just like Bob Newhart School of you know Psychology, stop it, don't worry, don't be anxious, right? But that's not really what Paul is saying here. Um, Paul is using the word for. Um, for uh, anxious or, or worry, as it's translated, is using this original word, merimnao, merim, merim and um, it's a common word that's used all over in the New Testament, and it talks about feelings of worry, but, um, but it talks about seeking to look out for something or to seek to promote one's interests, to seek to promote one's interests. So Paul is saying, don't worry about promoting what you want. Don't, pro don't worry about promoting or, or seeking your own interests. But he says, pray instead, pray about it. And it's the same word that Paul, I'm sorry, that Jesus used in Matthew chapter six, verse 25 in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, that's why I tell you not to worry, not to marinaho about everyday life, whether you have enough food, drink, or enough clothes to wear. Jesus is saying here, just don't, don't push, push those issues, but going back to what Paul says, but pray about that stuff. Give it to the Lord in prayer. And that's the essence of prayer, isn't it? Where we say, Lord, uh, I want your will to be done here, your kingdom come, your will be done. So in this situation that I'm facing, I'm asking you, Lord, to help us in this situation, and I'm asking for your will to be done. You see, there's a very big difference than worrying about and pushing our own agenda and submitting it to the Lord in prayer and saying, Lord, your will be done. But there's something else that Paul says here in verses six and seven. He talks about giving it to the Lord uh, and, and with thanksgiving. Uh, what are the words he used exactly? Um, uh, don't be anxious and said, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Pray to the Lord with thanksgiving. Friends, there's a very big difference when we're feeling worry, when we're feeling the weight of life. Uh, there's a very big difference between praying, God, you know, please, you have to do this. You have to help me with this. You know, a, a big difference between that and saying, Lord, 
I thank you for how you've been faithful in the past. Thank you for how you provided. Thank you for how you've uh, given me guidance. Thank you for, you know, and you fill in the blanks. I thank you for what you've done in the past. And Lord, I thank you. Uh, for what you're going to do in the future. I thank you for giving me, um, pr for providing for me. I thank you for giving me insight. I thank you for, you know, and you fill in the blanks, right? That's a very different prayer than, God, please, you have to do this. You have to help me with it, right? Giving it to the Lord with thanksgiving. And then Paul says the result of that will be peace, right? And we can understand how praying with that kind of a prayer just gives us a sense of peace. In fact, he said that uh, then you will experience, verse 7, God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will, listen to this, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? That God's peace will guard you. It will protect you. God's peace will protect you. Because I think that, you know, praying these kinds of prayers and living under the protection of God, living under the peace of God, I think that that just almost immediately lowers whatever the cause of our anxiety, whatever the cause of our worry, just knowing that we're under the protection of the Lord immediately reduces our anxiety. May not make it totally go away because sometimes anxiety is a very significant, you know, medical condition, but it just knowing that we're under the covering of the Lord, it just changes our pers perspective, right? And that living in God's peace will uh, will increase our um, our quality of life and increase our our longevity of life right reducing stress and living in peace gives us a longer um, uh, a better life right so god's peace will protect you it'll protect your your what did he say your heart and your mind right and then paul goes on in this second section to talk again about peace. Notice in the first section, verses six and seven, he says, are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling, are you worrying about stuff? You know, pray with thanksgiving and the result will be peace. And then in the second section, verses eight and nine, he says, fix your thoughts on, on good stuff. We'll read it in a minute. And the result will be peace at the end of verse nine. But let's, let's go back and read it. Verse eight, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace, the God of peace will be with you. So, um, as I, again, was processing this through the week, this made a real difference for me personally. Because earlier in the week, kind of on Monday and Tuesday, like I said, I was feeling, just feeling the weight of life, feeling the weight of my task list, a bit of worry, lack of peace. I just was feeling like life was a little bit on top of me instead of me being on top of it. And, and through the week, as I pondered this scripture, I paid attention to what I was giving my attention to, where my, I was allowing my thoughts to go. And instead of, instead of focusing on, on, the, um, on the challenges, I elevated my gaze. I elevated my gaze to the beauty of Jesus and his power and his provision. Instead of focusing on this stuff down here, I intentionally elevated my gaze. And friends, I gotta tell you that it made a difference. It, as the week went on and I was conscious of that and I just continually said, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace. I thank you for your provision. It made a difference in my life, right? And so this is, I won't say much about this today because it's kind of self-explanatory, but the more we choose to determine how we or where we give our thoughts, where we focus our attention, it actually makes a difference. And it helps us to discover peace. But look at, again, look at what Paul says at the end. It's not just peace like an object that we seek. He says the very last line, then the God of peace will be with you. 
Did you catch that? So it's not <clears throat> we're seeking for peace, we're trying to find peace like it's something out there. <clears throat> no, we're seeking the person of Jesus. We're seeking the God of peace who isn't out there somewhere. He dwells within us, right? then the God of peace, the very definition of peace, just like God is the very definition of love and, and peace and grace, he is, he is the definition of peace and that God of peace will dwell within you. He'll be with you. I'd like to finish by uh, circling back to where we began at the beginning and reading uh, what Sarah uh, Young had to say at the beginning. She said, peace, is my continual gift to you. It flows abundantly from my throne of grace. Just as the Israelites could not store up manna for the future, but had to gather it daily, so it is with my peace. You have designed me, uh, I'm sorry, I, I have designed you to need me moment by moment. As your awareness of your neediness increases, so does your realization of my abundant sufficiency. Friends, I guess my prayer, my hope for you today, uh, just as it is for me, is that every single day we would remind ourselves of our dependency on the Lord. And that's what she talks about in the second paragraph, how needy we are. Now that's not typically, um, you know, a good thing kind of in our, in our context to say, oh, you're needy, but, but yeah, yeah, I'm needy. I'm, I'm, I'm dependent. I, I'm so dependent on you, Lord. I, I need you every day. And as we take that posture, and as we take our worries to the Lord in prayer and we give it to God and we say, Lord, you do what you want to do with this situation. And I give you thanks for accomplishing your will, you know, through this thing. And also, uh, like Paul says, as we continually elevate our gaze to look at Jesus and to not look at the, at our, the, the obstacles and the worries, then it makes a difference. And the God of peace will every day dwell with you. So, yeah, I hope that this has been helpful for you, just like it's been helpful for me this week. And um, if at all possible, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday at, uh, at East Ridge Church, our new location for a little while. Uh, but look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Okay, God bless your friends. Have a fantastic day.